Every year we're throwing away 170 million tons of construction materials. That is essentially the equivalent of filling the Empire State Building 710 times. The reason why that's a problem is because 30% of it is still reusable and salvageable. And we can use that, we can obtain that value, extend the life cycle of those materials, and that lowers the embodied carbon of our natural resources. We know that climate change is a real issue that the building industry contributes nearly 40% of the carbon emissions in the world, whether it is the construction process or the building operations. And so it's time to make a change. The reason why I think the living building challenge can become the norm is because it's so easy to understand. The seven petals of the living building challenge are place, energy, water, materials, health and happiness, equity, and beauty. So there's a natural connection between the ambitions of the Living Building Challenge and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 6 on clean water and sanitation, Goal 7 on affordable and clean energy, Goal 9 on industry innovation and infrastructure, Goal 11 on sustainable cities and communities, and Goal 12 on sustainable production and consumption. They're pretty unique projects and there aren't very many of them, so Living Building Challenge is really the next level. It's, it's one of the most rigorous sustainable certification programs out there. There's 20 imperatives. You have to do all 20 to complete the full certification of the Living Building Challenge. So we're at Lifecycle Building Center and we're in a 70,000 square foot warehouse. It's an opportunity for people to come and donate their materials and for others to come and purchase those materials and reuse them, repurpose them and extend their life cycle. Building material reuse is not a new phenomenon. In fact, we're actually going back to how we used to remove buildings. But what we are about is showing the missed opportunities that are lost if you don't see the value of what we already have. The key with salvage is if you get it on the way to the landfill, it's free. So at the Candida building, we save a few hundred thousand dollars incorporating salvage materials there. So this, this is a sustainability element that does not cost more. My wife and I both Georgia Tech alum, and this is a major undertaking. It's the first in the Southeast, and I just knew that through all my background experiences at Skanska, our team is the right team to implement that at Georgia Tech. Having Georgia Tech on board was key. I mean, they're, they're, they're known for their technology, they're known for pushing batteries and, and being innovative. The human element at the Candida building was incredible. We had an integrated team, and uh, we really approached it that way. We're doing things along the way where we're saying, you know what, that light, it's not getting in just enough, and the energy consumption is, is gonna be a little bit too high in the future. Let's rotate our whole auditorium 90 degrees, drop that ceiling height 10 feet, and you know, let's see what that looks like in four days. Well, we, can't, we couldn't have done that 10 years ago. This project probably wouldn't have been possible without the technology we have available today. There were so many changes and, and so many back and forth uh, with the design team, ensuring that we had the, the right design that was sustainable and that we could keep it in budget. So cloud-based construction tools are a major factor in our, in our projects now. So one thing is we want to have estimating feedback really quickly. You know, the design team is working in Revit. We're working in Assemble. Those get uploaded automatically, and then we can give feedback in hours and days as opposed to a, a month. We were receiving updated models weekly sometimes and going through multiple design options. And without Assemble, there would have been no way to do that in that short amount of time. Using virtual reality streamlined the change management process because instead of taking a large amount of time to flip through plans and specs and, and understand the costs associated with those, the owner can make a decision in real time by just walking through and experiencing the space and experiencing those different options. Technology helps visualize, it helps quantify, it helps sell the idea of sustainability in a way that we haven't been able before. The more that we can utilize technology to prove our case, the more likely we're going to have regenerative buildings. Lifecycle Building Center had a relationship with the local film industries, and they collected over 25,000 linear feet of salvage 2x4. Skanska then nailed those panels together and installed them in the building. That is probably globally the best example of salvage that ever happened. 
the Candide building is a blueprint for the future, and we want others to come see it and share our knowledge. The Candida Building is a truly inspiring project, but it's one example, and sustainability only works if we scale it as an industry. I'm mother, I have a seven-year-old daughter. I want this planet to thrive.